welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure product review. Today we'll be taking a look at another one of the recent B&M exclusive 2018 collector sets. This time around it is a classic series collector set from the 1970s of Doctor Who, featuring the fourth Doctor, the Brigadier and the Auton from three separate stories spread throughout the third and fourth Doctor era. Now much like every single B&M three pack, this set is recommended retail at $16.99 and is currently hitting selected B&M stores throughout the UK. So I definitely recommend if you are interested in this set or any of the other ones available, ringing up your local stores and checking if they have them in. I'll probably leave the product codes in the description. However, do be warned, all of the three packs do in fact have exactly the same product codes. So definitely when you ring up, actually specify what sets they have in stock. Otherwise, you might end up going in to in fact find out that the stock they have is of a three pack that you don't in fact want. And also the previous sets released in the line from previous years also go under exactly the same product code. So it may in fact be one of the old releases from previous years. Taking a closer look at the packaging, it is pretty much exactly the same format to the other sets released in the line. However, it is a little bit smaller than previous years, which is rather unusual. So at the very top, we get the 5.5 slash 14 centimeters scale collector series bubble. And then we get this rather nice viewing window here to feature all the three figures on the inside. And the actual box itself is stylized with the rainbow design with the pinks and the purples, which is rather nice and eye-catching. Get the Doctor Who classic logo at the very bottom, along with the title of the set being the 1970s collector set there. And then we get the includes bubble at the very bottom bottom saying the fourth doctor the brigadier and the auton character options logo five plus at the very top at the top of the box do in fact get the doctor who logo once again along the character options website address title of the set on the sides of the box you just get the doctor who logo once again along the promotional image of the brigadier figure and the fourth doctor and then on the opposite side once again exactly the same format with the doctor who logo and then the promotional images once again of the fourth doctor and the auton that is in this set at the base of the box you just get your company information as per usual including the barcode and the contents and then on the back of the box once again we get the figures in the set nicely lined up and then we also get the titles at the very bottom however much like the 12th doctor set how i mentioned in that review it will be quite nice to have actually what episodes that they are from at the bottom along with a little bit of a description of the different figures in this set and the characters even though that i know exactly who they are it still would be nice to make it look a little bit more professional and kind of take up more space on the box because i do think it looks a little bit bland so here we have the 1970s collector set out of the box. Now this is a rather unusual combination of figures, of course spread throughout the third and fourth Doctor era. So to start off with, we get the Auton as seen in the second classic series Auton story, being Terror of the Autons. This is basically a basic reuse of the original Spearhead from Space Auton figure as seen in the third Doctor enemies set. Then we have the fourth Doctor as seen in the iconic classic Doctor Who story, the Talons of Wang Chiang, of course in his almost Sherlock Holmes ghetto. Up, which is a figure that I've honestly always wanted to add to the collection. And then finally, we have the Brigadier, as seen throughout the first season of Third Doctor Adventures, including episodes such as The Spearhead from Space, Doctor Who and the Silurians. And of course, once again, features a very familiar body to that of the Auton and another new series figure that no doubt you will all know what figure that is, because it's virtually exactly the same sculpt that everybody used to use to make classic Brigadier figures before we, of course, had a Brigadier in the classic series collection so it's quite ironic that it's came around full circle from having people making their own through customizations and now we have actual character options using exactly the same technique so firstly, taking a look at the Brigadier figure, of course in the actual series the Brigadier was portrayed by the late Nicholas Courtney, an absolutely brilliant character in Doctor Who history, definitely made a massive impact on the show, and he is generally somebody who will go down in Doctor Who history as being one of the most iconic characters, and probably one of the Doctor's greatest friends as well. Of course this is the fourth variant of the Brigadier that we've seen in the classic series action figure line, and this one is arguably the most different, because all the other variants do tend to be very green indeed. This one one is a little bit more of a cream theme which is quite nice and something that stands out a little bit more on the shelf. Taking a close look at the costume itself to be honest we don't really have too much going on because the actual costume in the show was also pretty basic so starting off we do have these rather large sculpted pockets on the chest section that really nicely bulge out of the actual costume. It also has a few creases running around the side to really nicely recreate the appearance of the material. Moving up from there we do have the collar section that's once again been really nicely sculpted to in fact pass 
slot in the very middle there, along with two buttons that have been rather nicely sculpted on. And the collar does, of course, lead all the way around the back of the figure as well. And then we do have a little bit of paint application in the very middle of the next section here, including a shirt underneath the actual suit itself, which is in a rather nice white colour. And then in the very middle of this, we do also get almost a neckerchief of some kind that has been painted in a rather nice almost toffee or fudge colour. On side of the costume, we do get this section of colour. As you can see, we have several squares there in sort of purple, red and blue and also a little bit of yellow in there as well, which I do believe in the actual show, that'll probably be his rank or something like that, but this has just been simplified down for the action figure form, but it still looks pretty cool and you can kind of guess what it is meant to be. And of course, also running along the shoulder pads of the actual figure itself, we do have this upper sculpted section that also has a few patterns nicely printed on of a few buttons or things here and there in sort of a red and yellow design, which once again, I do believe reflect his rank or something like that. On one side of the shoulder section, we do get this red band, which once again, I do believe if this was an actual brand new sculpted figure, this will probably be raised up a little bit or something like that. However, for this figure, it has just been simply painted on, which is kind of okay. You can guess what it's meant to look like. And this does, of course, also lead all the way around the back as well. And you can kind of guess what it's meant to be. Then also around the actual back of the figure, we do have a series of creases leading to the belt in the very middle as well, which nothing has changed from the original sculpt of what this figure used to be. In terms of the figure, I have nothing really going on whatsoever. Just exactly the same colour as the actual suit itself, just with a few creases sculpted in there as well and then exactly the same is present for the opposite side. The hands has been sculpted in a position to in fact hold a gun accessory or something like that however due to this being a B&M bargain set it doesn't come with any accessories whatsoever. For the opposite hand we don't really have too much going on it's just been sculpted in the open palm position with the skin tone rather nicely painted on. Moving down to the lower half of the costume we don't really have anything going on down here to be honest we just have the belt buckle that has been sculpted on rather nicely. Unfortunately there is no paint apps on this and it is exactly the same to the original sculpt and then the trousers themselves have once again just been painted in that cream or greenish colour with a little bit of creasing here and there including a bit of creasing at the bottom as well and then exactly the same at the opposite side on the back. As for the shoes these are probably some of the most basic character option shoes that I've ever seen they've just been painted in a rather burgundy looking colour unfortunately we do have a little bit of paint leak on these as you can see towards the side so it would have been nice if maybe that was patched up a little bit better. As for the likeness to Nicholas Courtney to be honest he looks a little bit worried he kind of just looks like that he's remembered that he's left the oven on at home or something like that because he's kind of staring very worryingly into your soul as you can see we do have a few paint apps there on the eyes of the eye whites rather nicely done as well as the rather big and thick black pupil section as well the eyebrows have been rather nicely painted on they kind of look quite natural and then we of course also have the mustache as well due to this once again being a bargain set I really do advise going to the store and actually having a good look at your figures before you buy them because I've seen a few rather wacky looking moustaches on these Brigadier figures and also a few even weirder looking eyes in this one. So yeah, it's a little bit of a shame that this figure does look a little bit odd. Taking a look at these sides of the head now, we do get some of the hair rather nicely poking out of the berry at the very top along the sculpt of the ears that has been rather nicely done and the same applies for the opposite side as well. However, unfortunately, it is a similar case to the 12th Doctor and Michelle Gomez figure where for some reason the paint application over the top seems to have drowned out some some of the smaller details such as the creases and wrinkles on the face. I will in fact compare this to the Forbidden Planet version in a second. I do also have the beret at the very top of the figure to of course finish it off. Now unfortunately the badge on this figure is a lot cheaper to the original version. The actual Forbidden Planet one has a unit printed on and it is the real actual logo. This time round it has just been represented by a little bit of cream running around the side and almost a lighter shade of sort of black paint in the very middle. The rest of the hat had just been painted in a similar colour to the other version almost in a pea green design with a little bit of lines going around the side and also a black band at the very bottom. Nothing really too special and to be honest the Forbidden Planet version is a lot higher in detail. Doing a comparison now to the far superior Forbidden Planet version. This is the Brigadier that came in the Claws of Axos collector set with Joe Grant and a Axon and you can quite obviously tell that the paint application on the original version is far superior. To start off with the eyebrows and the moustache are a lot sharper. You can actually see the creases and wrinkles around the face. The eyes themselves are also a lot more intricately done and the actual badge on the top of the head is the actual unit logo with even the text saying unit actually around the rim and generally I think that the B&M Bargains version kind of looks like once again a little bit of a knockoff. It does use exactly the same sculpt however this kind of proves how even if you have a decent sculpt if the paint application over the top isn't very good then you kind of end up with a figure 
that is the one on the left. It looks a lot more simple, a lot more basic, and also a lot more younger. Also, I've just realised that his moustache looks incredibly wonky and weird. And I'm going to stop this clip now, because quite frankly, this angle is really scaring me. Moving on to articulation, it is incredibly basic on this figure because it uses a sculpt that is from a really old figure. In fact, so we do have 360 at the head, we have 360 at the top of the arms, we have no upper arm articulation, bend at the elbow, 360 at the wrist, so we get 360 waist articulation, along with the T-crotch joint, that meaning they can move out to the sides and also out to the front as well. And then to finish off with, we also get bend at the knees. So yeah, very basic, however, it's something that you come to expect from a rather old sculpt. In comparison to the other brick Brigadier figures. Now, to be quite honest, I think that it's not exactly much competition. I think that the Three Doctors one is absolutely excellent. It's probably my favourite. I do also really like the Claws of Axos one as well. And I guess the other version, I do believe, from the Daemons is in fact one that is just a combination between the two. And that said, the one in this B&M set is a nice variation of costume. It's kind of nice to have an early version of the Brigadier, but I still like the other versions a lot more because to me, it's kind of the Brigadier that I know and love. The more iconic costume, and kind of the more recognisable version of that character as well. So yeah, a nice variation, but to be honest, I recommend trying to find the other versions because they are higher quality and also a lot better in design. Of course, you most likely already know that this figure, the main basis of the sculpt, is in fact the Series 1 version of Captain Jack Harkness, and that is the reason why the articulation is pretty poor, and to be honest, it might be a reason why the detail is also pretty basic as well. But hey, at least there's only one figure in this set that uses that sculpt. Oh wait. Next figure in the set is of course another Auton variation from the classic series, this time apparently as seen in Terror of the Autons, in a slightly different costume to the previous classic Auton that we've seen in the more blue boiler suit, apparently as seen in the spearhead from space. Taking a closer look at that costume now, to be honest, we're not going to be on this for long because we've literally just finished taking a look at exactly the same body. There is a few differences though, however, so we do have buttons going up the middle this time round and we do also have buttons at the very top of the actual costume itself. And then we do also have this scarf section that has been added to the very top half of the neck there that does have a few creases on here and there as well. This has just been painted in almost a lighter grey design. This time round, the belt has been retooled that is exactly the same sculpt to the one as seen on the spearhead from Space Figure. This time round, there is in fact a buckle in the middle as opposed to at the very side, and that is virtually it. There is absolutely no other differences whatsoever from what I can see. On oh, there is a little bit of creasing on the back as well that isn't on the Brigadier figure. That is in fact a little bit more creased around that section as opposed to the Brigadier's suit. Then exactly the same for the arms as well. Creases here and there, and then we do have the cuffs of the jacket at the very bottom as well. And yeah, that's basically it for this design. It is a nice reuse, and to be honest, they get away with it quite well. Much like the spearhead from Spear version of the classic Auton, the boots have been given a rather nice silver paint finish, which I do believe is accurate to what is seen once again in the actual story. Fortunately though, however, for some reason the entirety of the costume on this figure is for some reason sculpted in a plastic that has a very glossy appearance. Now I think that this works incredibly well on the hands and the head, but for some reason the rest of the costume, including the grey boiler suit, is also in this exactly the same design, meaning that the actual figure itself looks entirely glossy. I think that this gives the figure a really cheap looking appearance, and once again something of which that wasn't on the original spearhead from Space version, so it may have been nice to have a matte design on this as opposed to the glossier version and it may have also been nice to have the buttons on the boiler suit painted silver as well. Of the hands has been sculpted in your standard open palm position and doesn't really have too much detail on whatsoever and has been given this really nice glossy finish which really makes it look like plastic which is good considering that this is an Auton. And the opposite hand is a little bit more exciting of course because we have the Auton gun arm exposed. Now the actual hand section itself has once again been given this really nice glossy finish and then of course the gun in the very middle really nicely protrudes out. This has been painted silver and then we do have the blue section underneath. Now unlike the other version from the spearhead from space that did have a few paint apps on this sort of smaller section here and a few dots of paint i don't know if this was in fact absent in terror of the artons or if they've just decided to not have it on this release but either way it may have been nice to have it in there just to make it look a little bit more exciting taking a look at the likeness to an auton now to be quite honest the autons don't exactly have any personality whatsoever so it is quite hard to actually reflect any likeness or emotion within the actual head but the actual sculpt itself is once again exactly the same to the 
previous Spearhead from Space version. However, this time around it has been given this really lovely glossy finish, which is a little bit more orange than the other ones and is definitely a little bit more shiny. Of course, we do have the sculpt in there of the eyes and the nose that have been really nicely brought out by the shiny paint apps. And also we do have a little bit of a black paint job around the eyes as well to make them look very empty indeed. And then also the same applies for the lips at the very bottom. I do believe from what I can see, we do have a bit of a black paint tap in there as well. And then giving a rotation of the rest of the head, we basically have absolutely nothing going on. We have the sculpt of the ears rather nicely poking out and then just his rather large bald head. And to be honest, I'm not even going to bother going into articulation. It's exactly the same to the Brigadier figure with the basic design because of course, originally this was the series one Captain Jack Harkness body. In comparison to the Spearhead from Space version of the classic series Auton, there's not really too much in it to be honest. I think that the Spearhead version does have a lot more interesting paint apps. I generally like the matteness of the boiler suit. I think that that looks a lot better and I also like the fact that the buttons on the boiler suit have actually been painted silver. It's something of which I would have welcomed very much on this recent B&M version. I don't like how glossy the latest version is, especially on the boiler suit. I only like it on the hands and the head. I think that it gives a much more interesting finish, but that said, it's just not exactly the most exciting figure in the world really. It's a nice addition to the collection for the collectors that want more Autons, but it's not dazzling and it's not really that impressive either. Finally, to end off the 1970s collector set, we do of course have the fourth Doctor, as seen in the Talongs of Wang Chiang, one of my personal favourite stories of all time, and he is of course in his Sherlock Holmes outfit, which is absolutely brilliant. However, of course, you can quite obviously tell that this is the third Doctor's body in his cloak, with a little bit of retooling here and there, with the fourth Doctor's head stuck on top. It's not really the most impressive figure for sculpting detail because you can quite obviously tell what it used to be but that said at the same time I am beyond hope now of ever getting my proper Talong's Tom figure that I do believe was in fact originally planned. I think we were going to get one with a deer stalker hat which would have looked absolutely brilliant on display with Magnus Greel and Mr Sin and it's just a shame that we'll never get to see that figure in real life but hey we've got this one which at least it looks cool I must admit and at least it's a different costume to what we've seen before with the giant rainbow scarf. That it goes without saying that this is in fact the most eye-catching costume of this set because the previous two figures have used exactly the same sculpt and both of the costumes are pretty basic indeed. So starting off with the third Doctor's cloak, do have a few of his designs left over including these little tassel things at either side which I do believe is something that probably isn't on the cloak as seen in the towns of Wang Chiang but hey that can't be helped by reusing sculpts from other figures. The whole of the cloak itself has been painted in this chocolatey brown colour. This also continues onto the back as well. And then we get this rather lovely design of stripes that has been used over the top of this, including a few black stripes, silver stripes, and also a few red stripes in there as well. And rather nicely recreates the pattern as seen within the actual story and is really eye-catching on the very front of the figure as well. I love the fact that we actually have this blue line running down the side to almost give the impression of lining or something like that. And of course, on the inside of the cloak itself, once again, we just get that standard brand design once again repeated. And the cloak itself, it's actually quite flexible which is good something that the older third doctor figures did in fact have and sort of the original versions didn't and also on the back of the sculpt itself we do get a little bit of the overhang of the cloak coming around to the side which once again has a bit of lining on there sort of showing how the inside cloak is a little bit more blue and then we also get this blue line running along the side there as well which i do believe is meant to represent the way that this was also a flap that did sort of roll over to here and then this was in fact a different separate piece but yeah they kind of just painted that across to create that impression of course it is isn't actually sculpted on, which this being a original third Doctor sculpt, much like any third Doctor figure, if you pull back on the arms, you can also remove the cloak on the back, which is something that I don't think the fourth Doctor did within the actual story, but hey, it's kind of a feature there and gives you a different displayable option. I think that this is the moment on the figure that definitely gives it away that this is a completely different sculpt entirely, and is quite obviously the third Doctor's blazer. So once again, we get a few additional designs on this, including the buttons in the very middle and this rather nice creasing running along with side and we also get the pockets on there as well. Get the lapels and the collar section and then on the very back once again exactly the same design to a third Doctor figure and this has been painted in a rather nice brown colour. I do believe that in the actual series this did have a little bit of a pattern that was like a repetitive design good all the way around it. It would have been quite easy to put that on to be honest. They could have just printed it on but hey probably cost reasons prevented them from doing that so maybe if you're talented with paints you could add on a few dots here and there to maybe make it look a little bit more accurate. Sculpting on the arms is once again exactly the same to the 
third Doctor figure, including a little bit of creasing, and the frills at the bottom of the jacket have, of course, been painted over. In the middle of the blazer, we do in fact get a shirt poking out underneath. However, this is the rather unusual situation where this is in fact a completely brand new retooling that is made specifically for this figure. And we do have a waistcoat, as you can see, that has been painted in a dark grey design, and we do have the parting sculpted in the middle, along with a button there. It is pretty much very basic, to be honest. And then we do have a white shirt underneath, along with a little bit of a tie poking out, which once again has been painted in a brown colour. Now, it baffles me, considering that this is a completely new tooled piece specifically for this figure. However, not give the 12th Doctor in the 12th Doctor Collector set from the first the Raven with the red velvet jacket a waistcoat as well, because it would have been something that is virtually very simple to do. Literally, this is a waistcoat under here. It is exactly the same item of clothing. Give the impression of what I do believe are leather gloves seen in the actual story. They've just decided to paint the normal hand sculpt in a rather nice grey colour. Now, this in fact makes it look a little bit like a prototype, because normally prototype figures are in this rather unusual grey design, but this has been sculpted to once again hold the sonic screwdriver or another accessory of your choice. Either way, no accessories actually included within this set. Opposite hand is once again sculpted in your open palm position and has been painted in exactly the same manner with the grey paint taps over the top to give the impression of gloves. Moving down to the lower half of the costume, now we do once again get the third Doctor's design of trousers with a few ruffles here and there, and then exactly the same on the back. And then what baffles me even more is they've decided to use the sculpt of the rather large boots that I do believe were seen in the Green Death. And as you can quite obviously see, they've decided to paint over the colour of the trousers uh, over the actual boots, and then at the very bottom you do have the glossy black design of the shoes poking out, which gives the impression that that these are trousers that run all the way down to the bottom and then these are in fact just shoes and not boots and once again I wouldn't really question this if the sculpt of a standard third doctor leg with a shoe at the bottom didn't in fact exist but the previous set that I've reviewed of the third doctor and TARDIS has this exactly the same sculpt so they could have just used that leg design as opposed to this one but hey it does look a little bit unusual but thankfully you can in fact disguise that a little bit by putting the cloak over the top. Taking a look at the likeness to the fourth doctor now to be honest it is exactly the same sculpt to your standard wave one fourth doctor figure without the sculpt of the hatted head which is very good of course he didn't wear his normal hat in this story so I suppose that that is a little bit more accurate. Generally, the facial expression itself is the more stern design, which is quite nice. I do like it a little bit more than the manic grin because it is quite a dark story. So once again, it kind of makes sense. Generally, the paint application on the face is quite nice. The skin tone looks rather natural. And also the paint application on the lips also seems a rather nice pink colour. Once again, quite natural, unlike some of the other B&M Fourth Doctor figures that have been released over the years. The eyes have been painted rather nicely as well. I really love the way that we have the design of the pupil and also the lighter blue design of the iris in there as well. And I do believe if you look carefully, we do also have a little white reflection in there as well, which is a rather nice little attention to detail. To be honest, this is probably one of the best actual paint jobs seen on a figure this year in the B&M sets. I think that it doesn't really vary from the majority of classic series releases. It is rather similar to those. And then of course, to finish off on the actual face, we do have the eyebrows as well, which have been rather nicely painted on. So yeah, a pretty much same compliments for every fourth Doctor figure, really. So to finish off on the head, we do have the design of the curls in there as well which is exactly the same to every other fourth doctor figure of a darker brown base color and then of course a slightly yellowy design has been applied over the top of this to give a little bit of highlight it may have been nice to have a few gray flecks in there as well considering that this is a little bit later on in this era but only negative criticism that i can actually give of this likeness is the fact that it doesn't have the day stalker hat which is something that originally was planned on the forbidden planet exclusive classic line figure from what i understand but yeah we all know i think it's something that doesn't even need saying if this was actually a part of the Forbidden Planet line and was a sculpt that was actually accurate to what was seen in the episode, we will probably be looking at one of the best classic series action figures to be released and certainly one of the best fourth Doctor variants. Look at articulation now is exactly the same to a third Doctor release. Surprise, surprise, because it is a third Doctor's body. So starting off with, at the very top, do get 360 rotation at the head, or at least you would do. But I do believe that it is, in fact, quite stiff because, of course, this top of this head isn't, in fact, meant to be on this body. So, yeah, it is a little bit hard to move, but you probably could force it if you want to. 360 at the upper arm, and then also the 360 at that section as well. Bend at the elbow, 360 at the wrists. Then we have the T-crotch joint, 360 at the waist. 
just 360 at the thighs and then finally to end off with we have a 90 degree bend at the knee as well so in a comparison now to some of the other many fourth doctor figures in my collection i think that this is a similar case to the toys r us exclusive planet of the daleks sort of purple version of the third doctor where they quite obviously used a body that wasn't meant to be for that costume and it is rather inaccurate with that said there is still something about that variant that is really eye-catching and really pleasing to look at because considering the majority of these fourth doctors here in front of you right now all have the really long scarf that is really colorful and this fourth doctor is a little bit darker a little bit more grim and just has something about it that is incredibly unique and even though it could be a lot better it could have the deer stalker hat it could have the more intricate patterns on the blazer underneath and also the weird questionable choices of having the boots sculpt underneath as opposed to a normal sort of lower cut shoe design that would have been quite easily done if they actually thought about it i still think that this is a really cool figure and one of which that if you're a fourth doctor fan i highly recommend buying this set for especially if you're a fan of talons of wang chiang like me and to of course finish off this figure it only makes sense to show a comparison next to magnus Greel and mr sin from of course the classic wave one figures and he looks absolutely brilliant i'm so happy to finally have a variant similar to what is seen in the story in the collection and to be honest excluding the third doctor's tardis because that isn't really an action figure i think i'm gonna go as far to say that this is by far my favourite variant in the whole of all three of these collector sets this year and possibly even one of my favourite variants from B&M sets of all time. So overall for the Doctor Who B&M exclusive 2018-1970s collector figure set, this is actually my favourite of the three packs released this year. Comparing it to that of the 12th Doctor set, probably the other popular three pack of this year, taking away the aspect of having the debut of the Bill Potts figure, every single figure in that set set actually has rather bad quality control. This one, yes it does have three reuse of sculpts once again, but they are in fact quite clever reuses in sculpts. I think that quite obviously with the fourth doctor using the third doctor's body, it is a rather good design. I think that it only takes somebody who is quite obviously an experienced collector in the classic series action figures to actually tell that this is the third doctor's body repainted to be that of the tongues of Wang Chang. Fourth doctor, Brigadier figure, even though it uses the Captain Jack Harkness body that is something that fans have been doing for absolutely years and it makes sense if it's a sculpt that actually looks pretty similar to what is seen in the actual story then by all means use it and at the end of the day it creates quite a nice variant it's just a shame about the likeness being quite a lower quality compared to that of the Forbidden Planet exclusive version the Auton much like the enemies of the third Doctor set version of the Auton from the Spearhead from Space it is a rather nice design once again it does use the Captain Jack Harkness body but it is quite a simple redesign it does have a few alterations in there as well including the lack of the shoulder pads and a few buttons added to the boiler suit as well and the way that there is that glossy paint tap applied to both the hands and the head it makes sense and makes the figure look rather visually pleasing but at the end of the day it is still an auton and it is still pretty dull in design the main attraction to this set is of course the fourth doctor from the tongues of wang chiang yes it is a repaint it does have a retool in there as well but it is still a really nice visually pleasing figure to add to the collection so i highly recommend this one for those of you that have wanted a tongs of wang chang fourth doctor if you don't have a brigadier and more so if you've one of those classic collectors that have been desiring these figures for absolutely years and unfortunately will never get the higher quality versions in the forbidden planet exclusive line so thank you very much for watching this review i hope you've enjoyed it please do check out my other reviews of the third doctor and tardis collector set as well as the 12th doctor collector set and also do stay tuned for my review of the final set in this series the 11th doctor with amy pond and clara releases to finish off this whole series of exclusive bnm sets for this year so i hope you've enjoyed this review i shall see you all in more doctor who content in the near future as well so yeah thanks for watching i shall see you all next time bye for now